Hello, welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the stitchery and I'm so happy you're here today. Oh my goodness, okay. Are you ready? He's here. He's here. Highly, highly requested pattern. Dobby. Dobby the Christmas elf. <laughs> well, he's not really a Christmas elf. Wait, why aren't you a Christmas elf? What happened? Ah, boop. <laughs> now he's a Christmas elf. So if you don't like Harry Potter and you don't want to make Dobby specifically, make a Christmas elf. I show you how to make the little hat in the tutorial. No worries, his little stocking I made red for Christmas time instead of black or gray. And um, if you're ready, grab your hooks and let's make Dobby. Here we go, Dobby the elf. Now, first let's start out with his sock because he is a free elf. So, um, because it's Christmas, we're gonna give him a little red sock. So here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skipping the first two chains, one, two, and half double crochet into the third. Single crochet in the last two. Oops, there we go. Chain one and turn. Two single crochet, one and then one in the next one. Chain one and turn. Do that again. One, two. Chain one and turn. One and two. Then fasten off. Chain one, pull it through. And there we have Dobby's Christmas sock. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I like to make all my little pieces before we make the big piece to save time. So we're going to make his ears. So find your skin tone color that you chose for Dobby's skin. And we are going to make a magic ring. If you don't know how to make a magic ring, you can use the chain two method as well. I have a video all about how to make magic rings on my beginner's playlist. And I will link that down below. Okay. Make five single crochet into the magic ring. One, two, three, four, five. Pull your tail slightly, slip stitch to join in your first single crochet. Chain one. Now, unlike a normal amigurumi, turn. Yep. We're going to turn the whole piece. Make three single crochet. One. And you can mark it if you like. Two. And three. Chain one and turn. Then we are going to do a three single crochet together. So we're going to insert our hook into the first one, grab a loop, pull it up, two loops on your hook, stay, go into the next one, grab a loop, pull it up, three loops on your hook, stay, go into the last one, grab a loop, four loops on your hook, wrap, go through all four. 
chain one and turn. Now you are on this funny little thing that only has one stitch. And that's okay, because that's the stitch we're gonna go into. Ch chain one and turn and then single crochet into that final stitch. Chain one and turn. Two slip stitches on the side, right here. And right here. Fasten off with a decent sized tail. Now get your needle. And we are going to make the ears curve. First thing we got to do is we got to stitch this one closed. Right now it's like an open ring. There we go. Oh, you can move this now. Okay. All we're going to do to make this ear curve is we're going to take it on the end, pull it down, and just kind of shape it. That's it. That's what we're going to do. Nothing fancy. We don't do fancy on this channel. You know that. Okay, so now we're just going to make sure that our ear is ready to sew on the head. So we need the pieces to be over here. So pieces, I'm so sorry. The strings, we need them to be on this side. And take our one that closed our magic ring. Make sure it's on the edge somewhere. Okay. Now make your second one and what you're going to do is you're going to flip that one and make sure that these are on the other side. So they're on this side instead of this side. And then just hold and pinch until you like the shape of the ear. So that's how you're going to do the ears. So you need two of these. Let's make the nose. Chain three. One, two, three. You have your front loop, sorry, you have your front loop, your back loop, turn it over and you have these little bumps. That's what we're gonna work into. So we're just going to skip this first bump and slip stitch into the second one. That is Dobby's little nose. And you can pinch it to make it even pointier if you like. There, that's his nose. That's it. One more thing we have to make is the little tie. So get your um, outfit, whatever he's wearing, color, and chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now just skip the first chain and single crochet into the next eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now fasten off. Decent sized tail. And we are going to fold this in half like this. So try and make these two ends kind of even right here. And we are going to sew this closed. Hold on. I'm going to take my little safety pin here, stitch marker. <laughs> Words. I am so tired, y'all. I am so sorry. Okay. 
easier to make tutorials when you've slept. No. Okay, so we're just going to go back and forth through these top loops here to get to this middle pair right here. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that these two stay together. Nothing fancy, we just don't want it to come apart. Okay. And when you're satisfied, make sure that the string comes out on the back side of your piece, like this. And then you can just sew in this little tail, you don't need it. Okay, get your body color ready. Mine is this tan with shimmer in it because it's Christmas. And so, you know how Mrs. Weasley made everybody a sweater? I'm gonna pretend she made Dobby a special sweater too. Obviously you can use any colors you want. So either way, you'll be able to make this. All right, we're going to make an X, hold, Grab this one, turn, grab this one, and there we go. Like I said, entire tutorial, link down below. Okay, in our ring, whether it's a chain or a ring, you are going to make six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Slightly pull your ring closed. Okay, after you slightly pull it closed, you are going to insert your hook into the very first single crochet you made and make another single crochet. Mark it. We are making this in continuous rounds. That means no slip stitching and joining and all that kind of stuff. Just keep going. So. In the same stitch you just made a single crochet, you're gonna make another one because this is now an increase stitch. And we're going to increase in every stitch around so that we have 12 at the end. So that just means two single crochet in the exact same stitch all the way around. That will give you 12. I will meet you at the end of round two. Okay, to start round three, we are going to increase in this first stitch that we marked with a stitch marker, so it should be easy to find. So that means two single crochet in this one stitch. That's an increase. Mark the first stitch right here. In the next stitch, we are going to just make one single crochet. And that will be our pattern for round three. Two, which is an increase, one in the next. Two, one, two, one, two, one all the way around you should have 18 stitches now i do want you to count but here's a quick tip if you started with an increase your very last stitch should be the single crochet all by itself that gives you kind of a clue that you did it right but please still count counting is important and you need to have 18 stitches so we're going to have two in this stitch that's an increase one in the next, two in this stitch, one in the next, and repeat that all the way around till you have 18 stitches. Okay, to start round four, we need to remove our stitch marker, single crochet, just one, in this stitch. Mark it. In the next stitch, one single crochet and in the next stitch two or an increase so that's our pattern for this round one one two one one two it's totally fine if you say it to yourself one one two one one two now this round we started with one single crochet all by itself so can you take a guess what our last stitch should be that's right an increase 
you should end on a two stitch one, not a one. But you need to count and make sure that you have 24 stitches all the way around. So remember, the pattern is one, one, two. I will meet you at the end of round four. Double check that you have 24 stitches. Okay, do you have 24 stitches? Great. Now we are going to move on to round five. I'm going to remove my stitch marker, put one single crochet in the next stitch, and one single crochet in the stitch after that. And now we are going to do my trick. We were putting our stitch marker on top, right? So that we could see every time we needed to stop and change uh, to a different row. However, I like to put my stitch marker on the side of the stitch when I'm working continuous rows that are exactly the same. When I put it on top, it's an increase or a decrease round. When I put it on the side, I know that I'm just going round and round and round. Cool trick, huh? So for rounds five, six, and seven, you are going to just go 24 stitches around, no stopping, and this little thing will start to create a line of stitches and that will show you where to stop. Now, if you are still a beginner, you can absolutely mark every single round. And I also recommend having a little card or a piece of paper to check off the rounds that you've done just to keep yourself from getting confused. So make sure you have 24 stitches all the way around, nothing fancy, no increases, no decreases. We're just making 24 single crochet all the way around for three rounds. I will meet you at the end of round seven. Okay, this is the end of round seven. And look at this. See when I was talking about that little line? See that? Five, six, seven. All right up this little line right there. So obviously I stop here. Now, we're going to change color, and we are going to use my new favorite way of changing color. If you want to change color a different way, totally understand. But I like this way because a lot of people struggle sometimes on holding the yarn, you know, to get either do the twist or, or just hold the two pieces together. Sometimes our dexterity isn't that great. Well, I learned a way that you don't have to hold anything, and I love it. I actually made a short on this if you saw it. What we're going to do is we're going to grab our Dobby skin color, whatever color you chose. And here we go. I pulled up a loop so that it won't come out. And these are the stitches I normally work into, right? Right there on top. So this is a front loop. And this is called a side loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert my hook, just my hook, no yarn into the front loop and the side loop right here of the very last stitch of round seven. Do you see that? Okay, going to grab my new color with the tail facing me and loop it over my hook. Then I'm going to pull that through those two loops I just made, okay? Still not doing anything with this just yet. Now, for this particular pattern, this is how we proceed, and then I'll show you what to do with the loop. Now, for round eight, we are going to slip stitch in the back loop only. So here is our back loop. We're just gonna wrap our yarn and pull through everything. Back loop only. Wrap our yarn, pull through everything. Okay. After making a few stitches, now this tail, which is connected to this loop, watch what happens. Everything's perfect. Everything's together and nothing is coming out. So that is the new way that I like to change colors 
you don't have to do it that way. So what we're going to do for the rest of round eight is we're just going to slip stitch in the back loop all the way around and I will meet you right before round nine. Okay, so at the end of round eight, we are now going to fasten off our body color because we don't need it anymore and tuck our tails inside. You can absolutely take this little short tail and this little short tail and tie them together if it makes you feel better, especially if you're giving it to a child. You might want to tie these two tails inside, but everything should be nice and secure even if you don't. But if it makes you feel better, go ahead. So round five that's still marked with our stitch marker, I did not ask you to remove your stitch marker, that is going to be like our base. So that's what, you know, Dobby sits on, basically. So um, I would not remove the stitch marker if I were you. That's why I say to have multiple stitch markers. So I would get another stitch marker right now, if you don't have one. Try to make it a different color so you don't get confused. And for round nine, we are going to single crochet in the back loops all the way around. So front loop, back loop, right here. Front loop, back loop, right there. Okay. I would mark this stitch if I were you. You can mark the top if you wish, but remember, I'm going around and around, and I want to remind myself of that, so mine's on the side. So I would mark this stitch if I were you, so you know to stop right there. And we're just going to single crochet in the back loops all the way around for round nine for 24 single crochet. I will meet you at the end of round nine. This is the end of round nine. This is the last stitch. I just want to make sure you guys don't miss it. It's right here. Okay. And then there's our stitch marker. So that is our next stitch. For rounds 10, 11, and 12, you're just going to go around and around for 24 stitches. Just, just regular, like this. Through the both loops, like you've, like you've done before. So rounds 10, 11, and 12, and I will meet you at the end of round 12. Okay, at the end of round 12, so here is 9, 10, 11, and 12. I'm going to pull my hook up a little bit, and this is where I'm going to add some facial features. So get your eyes. If you are using this for a small child, see, it says right there, not suitable for children under three. So... Do not use safety eyes if you are giving this to a small child. If you are, um, if you are, then I have my false French knot tutorial linked down below. But where I put them and everything is still the same. So if you want to pause the video, go make a fr false French knot, come back, and I will show you where to put the eyes. Okay, so we're going to insert our eyes between rounds 10 and 11. So this is 9, 10, and 11. So this line right here. Just follow it to the front. If you fold your piece in half like this, and this back part now becomes the back of your piece, somewhere make a middle out of this and this line is where you will put your safety eyes. So about four stitches apart. So my middle is gonna be about, probably between these two stitches. So I'm gonna put an eye here. And then one, two, three, that's only three stitches. Okay, so one more. Cause remember you have to fit a nose in here too. Okay, so one, two, three, and four is where my needle is, and yep, I like that spacing. So that's where I'm going to put my eyes. Okay, and of course, don't forget to secure your backs or tie them if you are doing the false French knot. Okay, now get your nose. 
that you made earlier. And it's going to go in the middle like this. So take your short tail and insert it between the eyes, between rounds 10 and 9, right here. Then take your long tail and go between 11 and 12, right here. With your long tail, come back out and through the side of his nose, we are going to make one stitch just to make sure his nose stays on his face. Okay, now on the inside, I'm going to go down just through the back a couple of stitches to get closer to the short tail. Then I'm going to tie a knot with the short tail and the long tail. And I'm actually going to tie a couple of knots. I don't want it to go anywhere. Okay, and because it's on the inside, you can cut it, but it's also great stuffing because it's just on the inside already. So look, there's his little nose. <laughs> and you can always shape it like that. See? Isn't it cute? Okay, let's do his ears. Oh, actually, let's do his tie first so that the ears don't get in the way. Okay. So see his little, his little tie on the side? So we're going to count back from this eye right here. We're going to count back four stitches. So one, two, three, and four. This is where we are going to attach his little tie. So take the long loop and go through that stitch. I just lost it. One, two, three, four. Here we go and go into the body, position it how you like it, and then just go through it a couple of times just to make sure it's actually going to stay sewn on there. You know, nothing fancy required, just make sure it's not gonna come out. So just go in and out of the body as many times as you like. And there we go. There's his little tie. Okay, that should be plenty. And use the rest as stuffing. Okay, now we can do the ears. <laughs> so you should have a right ear and a left ear. So wherever the strings are coming out the back, then you want the front side as your ear, so this is one ear. See this one, they're coming out this side. This is the other ear. So that's how you'll place them on him, like so. So let's start with this one. Get your top tail, so the one coming out from the top, and we're gonna count back four stitches from his eye. So right here, one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to go in. And on the back of his ear, there are some loops right here, you see? So we are going to come out of the head and go in a couple of those loops just to make sure his ear stays like that. Now just go in and out of the head as many times as you like, grabbing some loops each time. Okay. Make sure you end up on the inside of the head when you're done. 
and the bottom string we are going to just go into the head between rounds 9 and 10 right there and then we're just going to tie a knot with the top and bottom string it might squish our elf a little bit but that's okay we can we can reshape him there we go now just tuck your tails inside be careful you're not tucking the tail you're working with to continue finishing off his head okay so that string is right here okay do the same thing on the other side one two three four should be pretty easy to find because your tie is right there. You can do it with the bottom string too. You just go in and out. Make sure that his ear is sideways. That's the goal. We just wanna make sure that the ear is sideways and not flat against the head. Okay, now all that's left to do is close them up. Okay, so for round 13, we are gonna go in the back loops only. And we are going to make one single crochet, two single crochet. I'm gonna move my stitch marker because we are decreasing. We are going to do a single crochet two together, but we're doing it in the back loops only. So the invisible decrease is not an option here. So you need to go into the stitch, bring up a loop, into the stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, wrap, go through all three. Relax, I'll show you that again. So the next two is just one and two. And here we go. Into one bring up a loop, into two, bring up a loop, three loops on your hook, wrap, and go through all three. One, two, in, wrap, pull up, in, wrap, pull up, wrap, go through three. So do that all the way around and you'll have 18 stitches. Okay. You can pause if you would like to stuff him now. Now, we still have the stitch marker here because it is kind of showing us where our base is. So when you stuff him, stuffing him against a table or something hard is a really, really good idea so that you create his little flat base. So I just take some stuffing and just kind of push it against the table. Because I want him to be able to sit up. Now I don't want to stuff too much because one, he's small, and two, I don't want this fluff to get in my way as I try to close his head. 
There we go. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to round 14. We're still decreasing because we want to close his head. So we're going to do the invisible decrease. If you've never done that before, I will show you now. Stick your hook under the front loop of the first stitch. Without doing anything, go in the front loop of the next stitch. Now your hook is kind of at an angle and there's three loops on your hook. Wrap, pull your yarn through just the first two, two loops still on your hook, wrap and go through the next two. That is the invisible decrease. Also mark that stitch. The next stitch is just one single crochet. If you find that this fuzz is in your way, stick your middle finger down here and push the fluff down while you work. Now, invisible decrease. Under the front loop, under the front loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two. Single crochet. Under the front loop, under the front loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, single crochet. Under the front loop, under the front loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, single crochet. Under the front loop, under the front loop, wrap, go through two, wrap, go through two, single crochet. Under, under, wrap, two, wrap, two, and single crochet. Now you should have 12 stitches. Make sure he can still sit. <laughs> it won't be perfect, but he should be able to sit up on his own. That's the goal. This is kind of your last opportunity to stuff him. Okay. And the last round, round 15, is we're going to decrease in every single stitch all the way around. Just keep going. You should have six. That's two. That's three. Four. Five. And six. Okay. Fasten off with a tail. Pull up. Kind of Squish his head. You want his head and his bottom to be kind of flat. Now we're going to close the head. There are millions of ways to close a head. This is just one of my favorite ways. We're going to take our needle and act as if it was our crochet hook and make more invisible decreases. So we're going to just wrap and go through under two of the front loops only and pull. Do it two more times. Two. And three. Pull a little bit so the hole closes. Go down straight through the middle, out through the back of the head somewhere. Then just keep going in and out. Be careful whenever you pull that you pull gently so you don't warp the head. And once you're finished, pull up so that there's some resistance between you and the yarn, and then it will get sucked back inside once you snip it. And now you can finally remove his little stitch marker. <laughs> and here's Dobby. Now he's missing something. His sock. So there are a couple options for his little sock. First of all, I'm so sorry, we forgot to um, hide the tail. <laughs> so this short tail down here, you can get rid of. You don't need this one. Okay. 
Totally forgot about that. Okay, this long tail up here, you can sew it to Dobby so that he has his sock, which is kind of cute. Or, this is one of my favorite ways, you take the long tail, go through down the middle stitch right here, very gently so you don't warp the shape of the sock. Then the stitch right behind it, you loop and go through some more stitches down here. Okay. Now if you pull on it, it shouldn't move. Right. Now that you are in the middle on the back of his sock, you place it somewhere on him. And then you just go through his body like this. And now he temporarily can hold his sock, but it's not attached to him, so you can remove it if you want to. And then you just hide the tail in pictures. So it's like it's sewn to him, but it's not. <laughs> Now it's Christmas, and let's say you don't want to make Dobby. Let's say you just want to make a cute little elf. Well, follow the exact same steps, except maybe leave off this tie, and change the color of the little outfit, and make some kind of cute little hat. In fact, let's make Dobby a Christmas hat, just for fun. Okay, make a magic ring, or a chain too. And make four single crochet. One, two, three, four. Close the ring. Single crochet into the first single crochet. And this is a little tight, but you gotta make four stitches again. I know. Usually stitch markers get in the way, so I just ro strongly recommend counting. One, two, three, and four. Okay, let's do that one more time. I know, don't hate me. <laughs> one, Ah, two, come on, three, and four. Oops, I gotta get through both loops. There we go, four. Okay. Now make two single crochet in the next stitch. Okay. Now we have to mark it, <laughs> otherwise we will absolutely get lost. In the next stitch, make one single crochet all by itself. In the next stitch, two single crochet. We're going to get rid of this annoying tail in just a second. And in the last stitch, one single crochet. Okay, now let's mess with this annoying little tail. Pull tight and just snip him off. As close to the inside as possible. There you go. There, now he's gone. Okay. So you just made six stitches. Now you're going to make another six. One. Two, three, 
and 6. Okay, now we're going to increase in the next stitch. 1, 2, 1 single crochet in the next stitch, 1 single crochet in the next stitch, 2 single crochet in the next stitch, 1, 2, 1 single crochet in the next, and 1 single crochet in the next. Okay, now just go around. You should have eight stitches. So that's one, two, three, seven, and eight. Now we are just going to increase in every single stitch around, which will give us 16. Now make 16 stitches around. Okay, in the next round we are making two single crochet in the first stitch, or an increase, and one single crochet in the next all the way around, okay you now have 24 stitches so make 24 stitches around again. Just one single crochet in every stitch. Okay, fasten off with a decent sized tail. Make the invisible join. If you don't know how to do that. See where our yarn is coming out. Skip the next stitch. Go into the next one. Pull gently. See where our yarn came out of this one? That's where we're going to go back in. Okay. And put our tail somewhere on the inside. If you want to sew it to their head, of course, you can, you know, um, leave a long tail and stuff. But I'm not going to sew it, so it doesn't really matter. Just take the end and kind of bend it. I know there's a way to like shape it so that it does it for me in the yarn, but eh, you know. I wish I had a little jingle bell to put on the end. <laughs> I'm just going to snip this because it's not going to be sewn on his head, but you can if you want to. And there. Okay, you know, he legitimately reminds me of one of the elves from the movie um, Rise of the Guardians. Have you guys ever seen that? Okay, now, here is the Rise of the Guardians elf, and here is my Dobby. What do you think? I think it's pretty close. So, you can make Rise of the Guardians elves if you want to, instead of Dobby. But this is Christmas Dobby. So this is Christmas Dobby in his sparkly little sweater, and his little sock, and his little hat. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to see your Dobbies and Christmas Elves. Come on, guys. Send me pictures. Tag me on Instagram. Put it in the Facebook group. I have got to see your Dobbies. So many messages about where is Dobby. So here he is. <laughs> so show me your pictures. I want to see Dobbies. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Goodbye.